ראש. Alright, welcome back to another episode of Fresh and Buds. I am your host, Tommy Fresh. It is episode 54 of Fresh and Buds. We are kicking into gear in year two of Fresh and Buds, and we're having a lot of fun. And I am joined this week by a wonderful, wonderful friend from the Outcast Haven. It is Dane. How you doing, buddy? Dude, good to be here, Tommy. I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be on here. Like, you know, love everything you do. I know we talked about it on our podcast when we had you on, but really just love, love all the content you put out. So couldn't be happier. Having a good night. Well, I appreciate it, my friend. We're going to have a good time tonight. You know, we, we've had a budding uh, friendship ever since, uh, especially Vegas when we, we played against each other and, uh, um, yeah, hashtag, uh, buds, uh, for the, uh, fresh and buds budding, you know, we got to sneak it in there. Love the fun. Love the fun. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you know we we uh you know had a good time in vegas and and it, it's been great ever since but uh before we get into the meat and potatoes of the show i do want to give a shout out to the patreon uh, which you guys can find in uh, the link tree below uh, it, it just uh you know helps keep the the mics hot and the lights on and you know it, it, every little bit helps and you know there's a, a lot of changes coming to it soon uh especially with uh how i format it and how the uh the, the tiers will work, which uh, will be very exciting uh, once I'm ready to announce it. Uh, a few moving parts right now, but exciting nonetheless. So obviously not required or anything like that. Everything is free. But if you'd like to chip in, take a look at it for me. And I also want to give a shout out to Realm Games in, in Mansfield, Ohio, who have given me a speakeasy giveaway ticket for their fall brawl in October in Columbus, which I'm very excited to attend. The speakeasy ticket uh, will let you get into the after day one kind of party. Um, It is 21 plus and to enter for my giveaway, you can uh, take a look. I I will have a link for it in in the the show notes, but um, I have a tweet where you can submit a podcaster hero card. It doesn't have to be an image. It could just be text, but if you want to do an image, that's cool too. And all you have to do is uh, submit that, and uh, you could be chosen to win. There is also a channel in the Buds Discord that you can submit it in as well. And the Buds Discord is also in the link tree. But that is all the upkeep we have to do here. We are into the show here with Dane. Um, you know, very excited to have you on. You know, one thing I always love to do when I have folks on is get to know a little bit about them before we kind of jump into any flesh and blood you know, targeted stuff. So uh, we'll learn yeah. a little bit about you and the Outcast Haven. So first, Dane, what, what, are, what are your history with TCGs? Yeah. Okay. So I just have to say first, like this is one of my favorite things about when you have guests on is you always like dive into them a little bit. It always like invests me in the podcast. And even knowing that you do this, I'm still just like, oh God, I'm not ready. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to talk about. Um yeah, so like my history of TCGs, I mean, I think like many, many people dates back to Magic and like junior high, high school, right? Um, you know, dabbled with like I remember playing Yu Gi Oh. You know, don't hate me. I don't know that I've actually told this story to the Outcast Haven guys. We have strong feelings about the Yu Gi Oh scene locally and stuff, but I remember playing Yu Gi Oh and making it almost like an RPG because like me and my brother when we were in junior high, my brother's younger than me, we'd play. And I'd be like, all right, great. Now we got to go and we got to make our way into the castle. And now we got to do a Yu-Gi-Oh battle. And like, <laughs> dude, so like I was into that type of shit, right? Just nerd to the extreme. Um, but didn't get into like competitive scenes until college. And it was actually my rugby team that we would go into like our college town and go to the game store. And we'd start playing. We started on playing like uh, like standard magic and just doing like draft nights and friday night magic stuff and that's where like i really got hooked on the concept of competitive gaming and i just from there the seed was planted right (laughs) no matter what happened in my life there was always some form of outlet for that uh and then i remember like star wars destiny was announced when i was down i was 
So I was military before, stationed in Kansas, didn't really have a ton of like my close knit friend group from college or anything anymore. And I remember walking into the store being like, let's play some magic. Who's like, how big is the scene here? Like, where should I go? What local shops run it? And, uh, you know, I was a little bit like putting yourself out there, getting into a new scene. And uh, Star Wars Destiny had like just launched and there was a group that was playing there and I, I love Star Wars. So I was like, cool. And then like months later, I ended up moving back to Minnesota. So met Blake, Jason, all the guys on Outcast Haven, all my current friend group that we play games with now. And we dove head first into Star Wars Destiny. Like the Fantasy Flight Games, the company that ran it was like here in Roseville, their their warehouse is like ten miles from my house. So <laughs> they had worlds here, you know, six hundred person tournaments. Like it was just wild. So that was a ton of fun. And uh that was where like the team started to like take shape a little bit. You know, the not even a team, just like a group of friends that would play. Mm-hmm. But like we started like referring to each other as like the outcasts because there was like the cool kids group <laughs> that had like and it was like the destiny council or something like that that like they had their they had like a podcast and all types of stuff and we just always referred to ourselves as like the outcasts because we never got to like hang out with them they didn't want us on their podcast like we always <laughs> did really well at tournaments and stuff like that but like no one would ever like sit with us after games and talk talk to us about decks and stuff so well that's you where know the outcast came from but yeah I do. I mean, well, first of all, before we get to that, I want to I want to take a step back and uh, kind of talk about Yu-Gi-Oh for a hot minute, uh, because I mean, this is something that I I may have mentioned on this podcast, but I remember specifically mentioning it on your podcast, and I believe yeah. you did like the cold in uh, the cold open uh, kind of clip uh, with with me talking. Uh, maybe, maybe oh no, maybe we were talking about uh, Kano. Or you know, smack talking. Yeah, yeah. One of I was we were smack talking a lot on on your podcast, which mm-hmm. was, was just like a ton of fun. But sort I do remember fun. telling yeah. you guys that like I before I even started Magic, my, all my friends were playing Yu Gi Oh, and mm-hmm. I was the one to be like, this game sucks. You know, it's like I yes. hate this game, and and uh, it, it is kind of <laughs> funny. But the, a lot of our generation, because I believe we're around the same age, you know, we, we yeah. all kind of started there, but. I, but mm-hmm. that does bring me to destiny, destiny though, because that is something I never got into. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm always um, wondering. You know, a lot of uh, I've had a lot of guests who have, have come from the destiny background. Um, uh, how? What are the similarities between uh, Star Wars Destiny and the Flesh and Blood, or even Magic? I mean, yeah, that. Wow. Okay. Well, one, I'm sorry if I gave you shit for playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I will say <laughs> to my defense that I have never played a game of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh in my life. All of my Yu-Gi-Oh experiences, like with me and my four-year younger than me brother <laughs> doing like campaigns at our kitchen table. But um, but no, so I mean, Destiny is similar to Flesh and Blood in the sense that you've got like your hero, right? It's, it's a team in Destiny. You can like build a team. I think it's something typically like 30 points. You can have like a two wide or three wide team. And you've kind of got factions, like you got light side, dark side, and neutral, kind of like you've got like the classes a little bit, I guess, is similar. Um, but from there, I mean, it's it's pretty different in the sense that the way that the game plays out, just, just because in Destiny you've got dice and a lot mm-hmm. of your your actions are activating characters and rolling dice out and upgrades on your characters and stuff like that. So that's a little different from flesh and blood. Honestly, that's part of what attracted me to it was there really wasn't anything like it at, at the time. And I haven't seen a game that's similar to it even mechanically since I think that like the, the TCG or CCG model mixed with dice is kind of hard to swallow. So I know that's where a lot of like production issues came in. So I kind of understand that there hasn't been another, no company's taken another run at that, that, you know, mm-hmm. system. But, uh, I mean, what I think it personally, I think it'd be great as like an LCG, just something you can buy everything for and build and play. But yeah, I mean, if you like, if you like Reinar or Kano 
I guess Kano more than, or KO more than Reinar. Um, you know, maybe give Destiny Smash a try. <laughs> Dice Commando Andrew over at Dice Commando, I know that he basically created like this this Destiny Smash like format where you just take two half decks and put them together and play with those heroes, and it's just kind of like a quick casual thing, but. I feel like I'm rambling a lot about no, a game you're that, good. Is, that is dead to me because that company <laughs> shattered my heart with the way that they handled that. So you know, you know, it's interesting. I mean, I, I do not have any experience with Destiny, but um, thinking about dice rolling in mm-hmm. card games uh, now, uh, obviously, you know, with Flesh and Blood, you have like brute stuff. You know, you're right. And but uh, I I played a decent amount, especially over the pandemic. I, I got into this game called um, oh god, Dice Hero. Um, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like it's 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 like you know you buy like individual like mm-hmm. heroes and they like they have a deck, but like you have to roll dice and stuff like that. I wonder if it's anything like that. I I do recommend that game um for for anybody who likes that kind of stuff and it's a nice two player thing that you can buy. You know if if you're just you know chilling with the you know your significant other or anything like that i've seen it i've literally i know nothing about the mechanics so that might be a similar game that a company took a run at that i was just talking out of my ass and not realizing that someone else Uh, yeah that one's i guess more like a um lcg right because you can just Mm. you can just buy there's no expansion or like booster packs okay no there's nothing like that but um pretty interesting like the whole dice rolling mechanic in in general uh, Flesh and Blood, you know, as we mentioned, Brute has a lot of that. And I, I think it's smart. And tell me if you agree or disagree that they're limiting it to just one hero class kind of yeah. faction. I like, so I think out, even outside the dice rolling, I like that people who enjoy that mechanic, that extra RNG, the extra high roll potential with the acceptance of the extra low roll potential. I like that that is an option for people, but I do like that it's not pervasive throughout the whole game. Mm-hmm. Like I like even even the RNG to like intimidate, like being able to pull a random card. It's like that I mean that's it. That's honestly more than dice probably one of like I don't like that aspect of the RNG cuz it's not you're not playing to anything. If mm-hmm. if intimidate was look at your opponent's hand and remove a non-attack action that's like that's that's a technical skill that you can practice and like know what is the danger card what is not but it's just you're pulling a card which and granted what i proposed would be way too powerful right but <laughs> yeah. i'm just saying like and it would be total dog shit into some matchups like ninja right so i mean i like that it is an option for people and they get that extra rng swing if they like it and i'm um, people like me who don't enjoy that aspect of card games can avoid it pretty easily mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah it's interesting because uh it's it's hard to say uh how much they will continue to explore intimidate right because mm-hmm. you know obviously reinar it's like that's all he's about and then yeah. in everfest they they did print some intimidate for like ko which i guess you can use in any um any brute deck but not particularly yeah. great in my girl Leviah. so Leviah's rng right you know you have the dice rolling with scab skins sometimes but her rng is literally building your engine of graveyard yeah. right her and then not intimidate it's not the dice but it's the discard and the banishing yeah. and that rng aspect of it which you can which i would argue is less rng because you can build an engine that functions well within that you're mm-hmm. not reliant on you can be if you want to totally just you know balls out go for it yeah you can always wing it and try but you can also <laughs> play pretty easily around you can't build yourself a situation where the dice rolls not what the dice rolls like a dice is going to roll what it's gonna yeah roll, right and so exactly and you know the nice thing about levi is you can play to mitigate that like mm-hmm. RNG, right? You can block with intent, like block with your sixes, only attack with sixes, and like, you know, use like not attacks, very like low frequency, and then even build the deck to the point where, you know, you're going to be fine. But yeah, I, I'm interested to see if they'll they'll kind of 
explore intimidate more or explore other ways to kind of do that rng for brutes something, yeah i mean something that seems kind of interesting to me is their i mean because if you look at the original four heroes right like they haven't they haven't really expounded upon any of those like the the keyword mechanics that those four heroes came with right like crush is not being really expounded upon combo reprise intimidate what like that type of thing isn't but but you're seeing things that could synergize with it you're seeing a way in which you know if they do release more cards like that it's not gonna the class isn't centralized around that keyword which mm -hmm. is really cool uh, the, the the class identity feeds into that keyword and what that keyword does for that hero but it also allows for a lot of expansion on what what could synergize with it and you can choose to use like if you wanted to you could build like an intimidating leviathan deck you know and right yeah. now probably not great but in the future if there's a if they release brute cards that trigger off of cards being banished from hand or something like that like there's so much room for them to explore that without it being intimidate that mm -hmm. i love i like the way that they're utilizing the design space is just really impressive to me, and I could wax poetic about <laughs> how I think they're handling everything for hours and hours. But yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think you're right that it's currently not, you know, like that's not going to be the central identity, like Intimidate, but who knows where they go with it. Yeah, I mean, it, there is like so much runway with, with, with what they've mm -hmm. set up so far. But um, it was a little bit of a tangent, but I, you know, it, it, it was, you know, any, any chance I get to talk about brutes is, uh, it's fine by me, but um, I'm really proud. I, I'm really proud of myself for keeping it together and like talking <laughs> mechanics with you because I fucking hate brute, like not, not, <laughs> not people that play brute, but just like for me and how I like to play games, it's not super inducive to me having fun. So I understand yeah, that. I, I, I totally respect. I actually found that like the best people to play against are people that like brute because they're there for fun like they're there not to say that like brute can't be competitive because it absolutely can but yeah. like the people that play brute like i feel like it's built into their identity as players that dude they're cool if it low like i can low roll this like you can't play brute and not be okay with low rolling yeah right and you, but, like you if you are to. okay yeah if you're okay with low rolling you're probably a pretty chill dude that's fun to play or, or chick right that's fun to play with so. yeah exactly so like you know it's it's uh it yeah it, it, especially with, i mean reinar is like one thing right you know that's like a whole nother mm -hmm. space that i'm not really that familiar with. i played with <laughs> reinar uh, but you okay. know i i'm on the 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 Leviah side of things which is like my low role is killing myself you know like it's like mm -hmm. It's like I, I'm here to yep. win or kill myself. Like basically, that's what yeah. I'm trying to do. Like it's almost <laughs> like I don't want to give you the satisfaction of winning. No I have what to happens lose. Here, you don't win. I either win or I lose. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I respect that. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, you know, I I understand the people who get, can get frustrated, especially with like something like scab skins, which yeah. When you're playing against the scab skins that rolls the six, it feels awful. But mm -hmm. it's it's like hard to remove yourself and and realize that that person playing with scab skins has double one oh, more yeah. times than hit the six, most likely. <laughs> but <laughs> there yeah. was a there was, there was a period for probably two months, a month or two months, where I was playing Reinar. I was like, you know, he was super interesting in blitz. Like, felt really strong. Like, I just felt like i needed to like get a grasp on him a little more and uh it was when do you remember when the uh oh god like kieran and um uh the new zealand guys when they when they were doing their claws brute when they mm -hmm. had like that like that was like the big thing right and i was like all right i gotta try this right I, I'm totally spacing right now. It's been a day, but I apologize <laughs> for forgetting your names. If you <laughs> hear about this, it's not because I don't respect you or think that you're awesome dudes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I so I was like I was playing brute, and like they would we'd watch each other like Jason and Blake and Robert and you know Michael and other guys on the team here. Like we'd watch each other's games and then they'd give feedback and stuff, and they'd be like, "Dude, you're not rolling your dice." I'm like, "Well, yeah, because I can do something." 
with my hand. Um, if I roll a one, though, I don't do anything. So I'm going to do something and not. And they're like, dude, you're playing brute wrong. That's not what you do. You <laughs> got to roll that and see if you get to swing twice with your claws. And it's like, I, I understand that, but I would rather guarantee a something than risk a nothing or a, a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm just not. It's like I, I get percentage wise how that like the statistics work on that, but I still hate yeah. it because that's not a fun decision point for me. You know, so. Yeah, I, I can understand that because you're like, well, it's just it comes down to like some people just aren't uh, <laughs> the same level of risk averse. And um, <laughs> this does remind me, I do want to give a shout out to a bud uh, that is yeah. also an excellent Reinar player that you know very well, Mr. Cody, uh, Copy Cody <laughs> uh, out in, out in Cody. Uh, Minnesota. Uh, love love him. Shout out to Cody. Uh, he is a great Reinar it's funny. player. When I talk about Reinar players or when I talk about Brute players, like just so everyone's aware, Cody is who's in my head. He is the guy <laughs> that I'm picturing because he's just the Reinar and Brute player that I've played against and <laughs> know the well the most. So, I you know I mean, I mean not to like you know go on this Cody tangent, but Cody also has this like like such Reinar esque uh, like confidence. Yeah. Like, you know, he's like, sits, he sits down. It's like, oh yeah, I'm just going to fatigue you. Like, you're like, okay. You know, it's like the chain player's just like, what really? And then, and then he does. And then, and just, uh, um, yeah, Cody's awesome. But, um, I do want to know a little bit about, you know, how you got to flesh and blood from like destiny and magic and, uh, how like the, the, you know, you and the outcast at the outcast Haven have, have, you know, Mm -hmm. started the podcast, which I also do want to say that I do appreciate the mentality of kind of being this haven for outcasts, as you said, like you guys felt like, you know, we're with the cool kids. Mm-hmm. I've been, you know, in that situation where like, I mean, that's, that was my goal with this space is like, well, I don't want um, people to feel like outcast in this game because mm-hmm. I, every other game I'd been a part um, was very clicky and mm-hmm. um, there were the cool kids, but yeah. Go ahead. Tell me a little bit about, you know, how you got into fab and, and how the, the Haven podcast really came to bloom. Yeah. So flesh and blood. So it basically started when star Wars destiny completely imploded on itself in late 2019, early 2020. And basically this game that we had centralized our social lives around like me, Blake, Jason, Robert, Michael, a bunch of the other guys here in Minnesota, got swept out from under us and we were just like oh well shit so we were all kind of we all you know spread our feelers out and started looking for something else to play something else to like pick up and we were all throwing like you know do we look at magic again and then we were like for a while there we were watching videos on magic and like all talking about it and then um at, at one point in there can't remember who it was had sent like hey there's this flesh and blood tcg this is in like january so this is before anything was really announced for the states or anything like that but i think it was right after team covenant had done like a like a playthrough or something like that or just talked about the game and then it just like there was nothing else for it so we just kept moving on and we we got into dbs and we played dbs we bought into a collection and split it amongst ourselves for like 300 bucks each and basically got everything we needed up to that point and started playing dbs really competitively and just you know like that was our that was now our new social thing was dbs and if you look back on our channel it's funny because you can see that a lot of our early content was dragon ball supers with dbs stands for if you're not aware but dragon ball super um what that's what we were doing content on because we realized that we wanted to do content we, we really loved in the Star Wars Destiny scene, there was a really small but really quality group of content creators. You know, there's like five different podcasts that every Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Sunday morning, whatever it was, like their podcasts would upload and you'd have stuff to listen to when you were driving and everything like that. So we were like, we want to do this for whatever game we get into because we've all got, if you've listened to our stuff at all, like we've all got like stronger personalities but we've all got, I think, pretty rational takes on things, except for Jason sometimes when he gets heated. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we were just like, let's let's do content for whatever. So we started that up. And then 
DBS, like Jason kind of fell off it because like the release schedule for that was just crazy. And we started kind of putting feelers out a little bit kind of behind the scenes because none of us wanted to say like we were no longer on DBS because it was like our life raft that we were hanging on to after Destiny got swept away. No, no one wanted to be like, well, I'm out on DBS. Like, so we just kind of show up whenever. And I started falling off, but I think I was the first one to truly just be like, I'm not playing anymore. And uh, Flesh and Blood interjected itself sort of mid that period. And we, Jason and I and Mark, um, which if you watch like a, it's not up anymore. I got to put that video back up. We did like a really cheesy, <laughs> terrible, like, like commercial video for our, for our channel on YouTube. <laughs> we all like, we got lights and we got cameras. We got our, you know, our audio switchboards and we got our mics and everything. And we went to Jason's house in his basement and set it all up. And we're like, we're doing this. We're going to podcast. We're getting everything going. And realize that there's way easier ways to do it so we weren't gonna do that whole like setup anymore but it's me jason and mark sitting around a table like here on outcast haven podcast we're gonna talk about box openings and we're gonna do like it was just all this shit we had no idea what we were doing right <laughs> we hadn't identified ourselves yet and uh i took it down because it was so bad but i'm you gotta put it being, back up put it I back know, up but it's the only reason i took it down is because it's like if someone's new to our page that's literally like the thing that they True. see it's like, true. ah, dude, that's not <laughs> not even really what we do anymore. But, yeah, so I'll put it back up for funsies. At you know point. what? You, all right, here's an idea. I don't know when your guys' anniversary is, right? Because I just had, came up on my anniversary. It's fun yeah. to do fun stuff like that. You got to pop that thing into the, the anniversary app or, or something <laughs> like that so that the yeah, true fans that's actually smart. get to see it. And, you know, and, uh, yeah, I think that would be smart, but. So um, this, I congrats by the way on going into year two. Ooh. I don't think I actually ever congratulated you on that. Uh, this friend. is, this is our second year anniversary. So we're going into year three, and we, that was not meant to be like a subtle one up. Um, I apologize no, for coming you're... off that way, but <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, you, you did something longer than me. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? No. So we're going into year three. And this month is actually our two-year anniversary for it. It was August 2020 when we actually started putting out content. Um, and this week is our 100th episode, so we're oh, yeah. we're rolling right into that. But um, check also, that out. Also, I, I do want to give it, you know, not not to like, this is not a one-up thing contest, but uh, our mutual <laughs> friends over at the Attack Action Podcast just had their, their two-year anniversary um they did a they did a stream yeah. i think uh last night uh which was monday we're recording on tuesday mm -hmm. um great guys over there love those guys but a lot of great podcasts celebrating <laughs> anniversaries yeah. in august i love it yeah it's funny we there was there was a small crew that started so it was um oh my god <laughs> the new zealand guys Fucking, I can only think of Kieran. I'm so sorry that I can't think of the other guy's name. If you think of it, Tommy, or if you know who it is, please just say it. Because I'm do they have a podcast? Uh, they did when this started, so they were. Mm. Um, they haven't done anything with it for a long time, and being put on the spot right here is fucking terrible. <laughs> um, but anyways, I'll um, I'll tell you afterwards. I'll look it up and let you know. But they did a lot of like really good early content, like really good. Because flesh and or New Zealand was the flesh and blood scene for like mm -hmm. the first year, like that was where all of the quality like content, the stuff that we liked from Star Wars Destiny, that was like analyzing metas and stuff like that. Granted, we didn't have a meta to analyze, so we were kind of just like living vicariously through them. Um, but they had like so it was it was them, and then it was um. The attack action guys and like we came on the scene like right around the same time i remember like having discord chats about like battling for who was going to be like the united states podcast and stuff like that like just like this is like early days before there was this huge boom of content creators right which when it finally happened we were like oh, thank fucking god like <laughs> finally there's stuff to listen to besides for like these not that they were bad by any means, because it was really quality content. It's just like when they're done, it's like I've now got an open week of nothing else to listen to until next week. So now it's like you could you could gorge yourself on flesh and blood content, which is 
one of the reasons that we started doing it for Flesh and Blood so much, because we had started on DBS, was we wanted to provide something that we wanted, you know? So, and one of the things that was kind of missing, which, like, Taylor and, like, the Attack Action guys, like, they really captured, like, the banter aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But one of our favorite groups uh, in Star Wars Destiny was, like, really, like, they are pretty blunt, like, really just talked shit about things they want to talk shit about and so we were like let's just do that let's fill that role you know like because it's 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 how we feel why curb ourselves yeah and you know make this something that we're not so just kind of leaned into that that is something that you know i mean if anybody's listening that you know wants to start creating content in in Mm -hmm. flesh and blood or other spaces uh, I always, I mean, you know, like, like you said, like kind of look at something that you're enjoying in another space and kind of don't steal their yeah. idea, but you know, take no, that format them, and, and make it your own. And, and like, yeah, like that, like, that's, that's exactly, you know, kind of, I mean, I guess mm-hmm. I had a, I had a different idea for this podcast at, at first, but it's kind of forming yeah. formed into what this is now, but you know, and, and there's other things that are coming down the pipes that are based on some other formats that I've enjoyed in other spaces. So, you know, it's a, it's a mm-hmm. good thing to do because um, if you crave something in a space, you know, uh, yeah, who, who better to put it out there than yourself, right? Right. If you have a vision for what you want to do, do it. Blake and Jason fucking hate me for that reason because I feel like <laughs> I'm constantly hitting them with like, hey. Like, there's this other podcast I listen to. I really love that they do this. Like, is this something you guys want to do? And they're always just like, no, Dane, fuck off. We don't want to do that. <laughs> like, like why well, would we're good? And it's like, yeah, okay, you're right. Sorry. I just thought it was cool. But it's like, it's, there's like, I'm doing that all the time. And I know what they are too. It's just funny to give them shit. But that's all right. Um, you know, sometimes you got to be, you know, creative shakes things up. But sometimes. If it ain't broke, don't yeah. fix it. The most a, recent thing was like the preamble ramble yeah. from it's this podcast trapped under plastic that I love listening to. And like they do like this, like it's a deliberate ten minute of just like bullshitting about deliberately off topic things to like get it out of your system, get that banner going, mm-hmm. and then they roll into their topics. And I love that because you know, we we diverge quite a bit during the podcast, which I still want to do, but but yeah, I was like, let's try that, let's do that. And Jason's like, We already do that. I need to do that. Like, fair enough. Some, That's true. You know, a little side thought. Something I always love. But I, I'll never do on this show, I don't think. I mean, I, I might try it out, but a cold open. Mm-hmm. I love a cold open. Like, where yeah. you just turn it on and then, you know, something's already happening. That's kind of fun. Yeah. But maybe not, not, the, not the right space always. But, you know, I digress. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but do you have any future plans for the Outcast Haven? I mean, if it ever becomes feasible, we want to do in person. I think that that's kind of on all of our minds is we'd love to like sit down and like have like a dedicated space for this. But honestly, I don't see like we've all got families. We've all got kids. We're all busy with the aforementioned kids. Like it's Mm -hmm. it's sort of uh, we're 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 kind of good just adjusting what we have now and trying to get into like we've we've hit a really good stride with just knowing like our you know our tempo and when we're when we're going live what we're going to talk about it's pretty non-obtrusive into our daily lives i think the most obtrusive it is is me doing the editing after we're done recording and that's like not even a big deal anymore just because i've got like the system down and my assets saved and stuff so like everything's become like so comfortable now that i feel like it is truly just about the conversation Mm -hmm. which is i think we're all just kind of riding right now it's really enjoyable to just be able to be like all right it's 8 30 thursday night let's all hop on we get on we talk for an hour and a half i clip out all the shit that's not worth like being heard which isn't that much i usually leave the majority of it in so you guys get all that magic but um we <laughs> yeah we just it's kind of flows for everybody right now in the winter time i think we might try something a little new i i kind of wanted to do like a hundred episode like not rebrand but like do a little bit of like a shake-up of like our thumbnails and like readjust you know based on what's worked and what hasn't um but again like there's not really any rush for that for us because we we fit our i i feel like we fit our stride and we want to like let that not be obtrusive into our lives for a little bit because the first i mean the first year was 
I mean, I'm sure you know too. Like it's it, it can be a lot to a new routine, you know, like as you're building a routine around incorporating oh, yeah. this into stuff that you do. Like, that's a lot of time and effort and energy put into it. So when yeah, it finally stops becoming so, you know, taxing on you. Yeah, I, I do remember like the first, you know, just like you know, getting into the stride with guests uh, for mine, mm -hmm. and then just like the first holiday season, which also happened to be you know, a relatively dead time for flesh and blood mm -hmm. because LSS takes vacation. We don't get any news for a couple of weeks and, you yeah. know, we don't, we didn't get like Everfest spoilers till January. So, you know, um, yeah, yeah, but the, the hitting the stride is, is great. And you guys are doing great over there. And, um, obviously anybody who hasn't checked out the outcast Haven, you should all do so. But, um, I do want to move on to a segment of the show that I love, the Fresh Faves, Mr. Dane. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Uh, this is where I'm going to ask you a, a few of your favorite things in Flesh and Blood, and you're going to give me an answer. Are you ready? No, I'm not, but I do, did that deliberately, so you get a real <laughs> reaction. So right. I saw this, and I was like, I'm not going to think about it. Yeah, don't even look. Uh, <laughs> uh, the first is who is your favorite hero prism oh yeah oh man Dude. she's just she clicks with what i find enjoyable in the game like the methodical setup and like it's just as soon as i started playing her i was like dad this is this is just fun for me the fact that she's good and can win consistently is a bonus but like this was the first hero where i felt like I was doing what I wanted to do throughout the game. So, yeah. That's totally, Eat me, dude. I don't know what to say. I, I I, you know what? I, listen, I you know I can't fault you for it. Or I can a little bit. <laughs> but uh, A lot of people can. I get I get plenty of shit. Don't worry about it. Here, here's the, the follow-up question, though. So, she's close to LL, and she yeah. might hit it. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But um, So, that play style, are you moving into a possibly dromai kind of uh a phase for yourself or some people i'm mm -hmm. seeing are even kind of like I, I like what icelander's doing uh kind of yeah. like playing on on um, the opponent's turn kind of being disruptive yeah so historically i really enjoy control decks like that's been what i played magic you know that's what i played and even in destiny to what it what, what you could have for control in destiny um but the more methodical uh, that's how i basically like to describe is like i like to set up and play and play and play pushing you slowly towards being in a position where my win con takes effect like that's that's mm -hmm. like typically like if i were to be able to sum up what i enjoy in card games it's if you're gonna let me if i can maneuver and like sheepdog you into like being where i want you to be and that's that's like the fun play for me is like am i doing this all right are you going to respond this way cool then i'm going to do this and i'm just going to basically like you know mm -hmm. sheepdog you into the pen and then when you're in the pen my win con takes effect and that's that's fun to me that's what i like to do um but yeah i mean like part of me now with prism hitting ll like i've been so it's basically the only deck I've played. Like I've, I dabbled in other stuff just to have other experience. And when I want to try something fun or new or spicy, or I see something that strikes, like Death Dealer or Lexi was a big one where like when that, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to run that for a while. Cause that's just super fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, but always going back to Prism. With this, I've been with the Living Legend coming up. This is actually, I'm actually in my nightmare right now is being <laughs> like that whole like middle ground of like, is she, isn't she like, can I play her? Can't I, should I stop? Should I move on to practice something new? Or is she going to be around for another year and a half without hitting it? And this whole time I could have been playing her. Like, I hate this so much. Just Living Legend her, please, for the love of God. Or don't, and then just don't. And let me keep playing her. Like, make up your mind. But, um... Yeah, I'm I'm I've got to draw my deck build just because I think that she feels kind of similar, not not as I don't know how to describe it other than she doesn't feel as solidified. Like mm -hmm. I think it I think it is like 
not solidified in the sense of where she is in the meta or anything or her deck build or anything like that. I just mean like when I'm playing her, I don't feel as I'm building my board that it's becoming more and more solidified. Um, yeah. Just because it's, you know, it there's different ways you can handle it, and which I think is good for the game overall. I acknowledge, too, Blake likes to bring up all the time that Spectra he thinks is just a garbage mechanic introduced to the game that <laughs> really sure fucks is. with a lot of decks and builds. <laughs> yeah, which I actually acknowledge so if you're saying that in the comments because i like prism <laughs> fuck off because i agree with you i don't think it's great but it allowed me to do what i enjoy so <laughs> yeah, well, you know <laughs> what? i apologize for that uh it's a nice little trade-off but you know <laughs> yeah I, I see i see what you're saying with drum i mean I'm also new stuff right now yeah. i'm trying i'm trying i got a i've got an ice lexi deck put together i've got drum put together um and then i i mean icelander I'm still playing with it, but it's, it's right now. Ice Lexi is more, yeah. Ice Lexi feels more like a feasible attempt at making a competitive deck than Icelander does. And maybe that's just because I don't have a ton of wizard experience or practice with her. And it is like a extremely skill intensive wizard as a whole is this mm-hmm. right. Where it's, ex- it's extremely skill intensive and like missing windows, missing a small, a small play line or something that you should have done snowballs within the turn or the next two turns into something that's not recoverable from right so like missing that and i have zero practice on that not yeah. having played wizard so so that's probably part of it too but yeah i'm kind of all over right now looking for a new looking for a new bay as, <laughs> as people say yeah, as the the kids are saying and 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 for the buds out there we will jump into the the wizard discussion when i have blake on i'm sure yeah god uh, yeah dude he <laughs> speaking of waxing poetic he will talk for fucking days about wizards so just be ready just be ready for that well we'll have to have a timer on it but uh <laughs> the next fresh fave is what is your favorite weapon god i gotta say kadachi okay all right as I long just, as you didn't say luminaris no no <laughs> luminaris is a <laughs> I was actually if looking back, I was because I, I like to rewatch like I, I'll chunk out like our time frame of podcast episodes and I'll just go back like three months and pick a random episode and listen to it and see like what I thought. And a couple weeks ago I was listening to one from it was like three or four months ago and it was when when the ban and errata was coming out and I really I wanted Luminars to be on it as a prison player. I was like, I think that, I mean, selfishly, I was playing a prism with a really fun iris, like a really fun iris build. Oh, wow. That the, o- the only, in my testing, the only really auto loss matchup was into Luminaris prism because it's just so much more value on the swings to pop auras and stuff. So I was just like, yeah, that's, this is dog shit. Like, <laughs> this is not going <laughs> to win me anything. Um. But like I, I agree with the people who are like Luminaris is a busted weapon. I think it's the strongest weapon in the game. That was like at that point when that podcast was released, that had been released, right? Luminaris was just ridiculous what it did for Prism. So, but I say Kadachi because, and you can ask Jason this when he's on. But I loved so much the looks on their faces, Blake and Jason's faces. When we first started the game, and I was I was on Katsu. I loved Katsu mm. like the, of the first four. Like he was definitely my man. And Blake and Jason blow both like Bravo and Dorinthia. And I would just the the Kadachi for one. Just saying that, <laughs> like turn seven or turn eight of saying that every turn. Like just the they would, uh, Jason would have like a vein popping out on the side <laughs> of his neck, and like I just. Kadachi is just, it's got sentimental value to me for that reason, you know? Oh, that's a great answer. I, I love a little sentimental <laughs> value. Um, the next is, what is your favorite equipment? Mm. There are no wrong answers. I, I know, I know. Mine is... I sh- I'm starting to, yeah, go for it. Carrion Husk is mine. The, the folks at home know that. You yeah, know, it's, it's a little cheating. Yeah. It's like the, the it. best equipment yeah. in the game. But <laughs> I really love Tunic. 
that's my favorite. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> dude, I think I got it. A lot of this is like sentimental. I I'm realizing now I should have like put some thought into this beforehand, <laughs> right? No, <laughs> like, you're sorry, good. You're good. Um, I don't want dead air. No, like, I think mask momentum. Okay. Just because I mean, that, again, kind of going back to being a Katsume when the, when we first got into the game, like first set came out, like that's what we were playing, and I got my cold foil mask, and like you know, and I just seeing what existed within the game that was almost non um quantifiable mm-hmm. like cuz mask what it brought what it gave and like it, it, it mask was also part of me realizing and having a light bulb go on for what it means to set up your character right and to have like to threaten your opponent and because mask you don't take it for the effect. You take it for like what that effect threatens, mm-hmm. right? Like you're not taking it anticipating that you're going to get that card draw or like trying to set up your deck so that you do get that card draw. You take it because it forces your opponent to block. Like it literally, it, mm-hmm. it literally forces them to, where you're getting a card draw and like realizing like that was, you know, really early on in the game. That was one of my first aha moments of like, Oh, there's way more to like, this game and what you take and what you can what you bring to the table and what you threaten your opponent with than just like putting a card down and saying attack for four there's a lot like there's it's a lot deeper than that mask momentum was like that big aha moment for me so and i've got a cold foil so i gotta just give it to that (laughs) hey i mean a little jealous of that but uh (laughs) i I will say that uh, the thing i love about mask is that is like the quintessential card in the game to me that is like you put it down and you're like you say to your opponent you got to play you got to outplay me you know you have Which, to play different yep mm-hmm. like i put this down you now need to play around every turn that i have because of something that i am setting up for you yeah, yeah. which is so cool now the yep. final fresh fave is what is your favorite non-hero non-weapon non-equipment card your run-of-the-mill cards attack actions actions and instants Ooh. There's a lot of options here. Yep, I'm going I'm I'm refusing to say something that's Katsu related. Um <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh leg like tap. Oh, like that. I just really love head trap. Yeah. Just, <laughs> no, um <laughs> I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to Prism. I really loved the OG competitive prison build that was like high roll, like Tome of Divinity build. Oh, I think Tome of Divinity was one of the. I've never been happier drawing a card than when you draw a Tome of Divinity, especially off of a Tome of Divinity. So oh, yeah. I got it. Like, I think that that is just almost like a chemical conditioning in my brain at this point where it's like, as I'm playing, it's just like, oh, yo, God. oh yeah. <laughs> so. So I got to give it to that just because that card has been etched into my brain is like, you want to see it. It's your favorite card. It's the best card. See it more. So yeah. I, Tome of Divinity. I have a lot of respect for that. Um, not so much uh, prism <laughs> related, but flamed. I'll take it. <laughs> but I will say uh, I, I, I've had more conversations uh, with, with players that I play with locally and even, even, you know, some buds in the discord about how badly I want to make a vestige of soul, Tome of divinity, Bolton work somehow, oh, some yeah. way, which is yeah. just, it, it sounds like the coolest thing ever. And it's very not, it's not very feasible because charge is such an underpowered mechanic. And yeah. Dude, um, I feel like they really just missed the mark on charge a little they bit. Dropped the if ball you wanna, big time. You want a tangent a little bit, even just making halo, saying that you charge because mm-hmm. it's still like saying it charges now just adds bolt into the mix right because yeah. prisms being put in soul stuff all still fucking works but now bolton gets to play with halo too and that halo just saves like that's his get out of jail free card on the turn where he doesn't have something that easily charges and yeah. bolton's great you know it's, it's so. such a shame because i think yeah. bolton's one of the coolest coolest like in terms of like lore and aesthetic and like what he does yeah, i mean I, I i i talk about all the time raiden is one of my favorite weapons in the game mm-hmm. it, it's so cool but you you build a raiden uh 
uh, Bolton deck, and you're just like, I'm doing what Runeblade does, but worse. You know? Right. And yep. it's just, it's very frustrating, and I can go on and on about it, but hopefully, <laughs> um, hopefully Dynasty changes that. But that was the fresh faves, yeah. everybody. Uh, we're going to move into some Pro Tour Leal or Lily predictions. I do not know the pronunciation, uh, but we're going to just uh, shorten it for now to Pro Tour France. Yep. And um, yeah, we got some predictions. But first, I want to I want to throw out some predictions that I got from the listeners in the Buds Discord here. Um, friend of the show and former guest, Capolo says Chris Laley is going to be in top eight. Now, I don't I did not know who Chris was. I asked Capolo, and, and he is a testing partner of former calling champion Tyler Horsepool. He plays mm-hmm. a lot of room blades. He's 47th on constructed Elos, and he's had a couple top 16 at callings. Um, my initial reaction is kind of hard to say who's going to be in top eight, specifically player wise. Um, mm-hmm. This goes for um, uh, another listener, Sigma Ordos, uh, also said that Tobias Lind, which is a Swedish player over there in Europe. Uh, it's going to be in top eight. Another very talented player, but it's hard to say who is really going to be in the top eight. Don't yeah. you agree? I do. This actually, if you're okay, because I, I want you to finish talking about like your listener predictions and stuff. But this mm-hmm. hits on a really big point that I've been coming to terms with over the last like week or two, and I plan on talking about it on our podcast this week. But since it came up, I would love to talk about it on yours. Yeah, go for it. But. But yeah, we can talk about predictions first. But then just like remind me that there. Hey, Dane, you had a big, like, great you, segue that you skipped over for the sake of the, for the yeah. sake of the segment. Go into the go into the, the tangent now. I want you, I want you to get. We we'll go back. We can. This is all right. Cool. This is my my show. I'll do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> you want to run it up the chain quick, Tommy, and just make sure that everyone's cool with it on your yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, so. There's been a lot of, so this came up with the introduction of Blitz in Worlds. And that mm-hmm. whole, I know that you're familiar with everything that came out, social media for that, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. And something that we talked about last week on our podcast that I really wanted to dig into more this week was, I love that this is becoming player-centric and not hero-centric as far as talking about what's going to win, right? Because as soon as you introduce like multiple formats like this, before it was still very cc heavy and like you could say like oh bravo won the calling indie right like or like you know what whatever it was like it was who won who won that calling and 99 percent of the time you're asking what hero won that calling Mm -hmm. but with with this new like introducing this blitz as well i think that that almost has to go away Right, like it, you, like if someone were to come back from Worlds and say Dash won that, it's like okay, did she, or was that what the player happened to use for their CC segment of mm-hmm. their Worlds run? You know what I mean? Like you, so it, that sort of disappears, and I love the fact that Flesh and Blood is leaning into making this really player centric. Like it, it is just a test of player skill and player ability at this mm-hmm. point. And I was I was pretty outspoken against against the blitz aspect of it, and Blake turned me around on it like real quick because he just said because I was I was coming into it thinking of it as they just wanted to test pilot skill and if you want to test pilot skill you have a better test of pilot skill in CC than you do in blitz because blitz does introduce RNG even if it's just CC is eighty percent skill and twenty percent luck and blitz is 79% skill and 21% luck because i would argue that no one's going to say blitz is more skill intensive right like you're not no, no. one's going to be like blitz takes more skill to win so just just using that as my my background right even if it's just a 1% difference why include the lesser of the two tests if you're just testing pilot skill so blake said that's not what they're testing that they're they're testing for commitment to the game. They're testing for who wants to look at multiple metas and keep track of multiple formats and like that that's what they're really testing for and I was like, "Oh, shit. Yeah, well, if that's the case, which uh, you know, in hindsight, it's pretty obvious." Yeah. Then 
yeah, it's great. Include Blitz because why not? Yeah. So I was just looking at it through the wrong lens. My but, only I mean, thoughts it, on that. And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I do, I do agree now, you know, it, <laughs> you're right. It is not more skill intensive than CC, but I don't think it's that much less skill intensive than CC. No, like it's yeah, not, it's the, the jump is not. And I, I'm saying that as someone I play basically all CC or limited. Right. But mm -hmm. You know, I, I will play Blitz from time to time, but like uh, I believe SCG Baltimore uh, was, and I'm I'm not too far from Baltimore, and I chose not to go because it was Blitz, and I'm not not going because it was Blitz because like Blitz is very RNG dependent. It, I'm not going because I have not learned that skill. I like it. I have not learned that format. I have I I have not put any time into it. And mm -hmm. I know there are a lot of players that do. And, you know, that is only fair. And I know a lot of the the most outspoken people in the community have focused on CC for a very long mm -hmm. time. And, and they have not put in the Blitz kind of uh, uh, time. Like even, even um, uh, you know, some, some friends that I have locally that are playing in the Pro Tour that are like now they're, they're realizing they have to figure out how to play Blitz because they're like um, – so, ah, oh, you should just take my CC deck and trim it down to forty cards. I know that's not that's not how that works. <laughs> it's not how it works. It's, man. Not, it's, like, it's not gonna go well. <laughs> you gotta show up. You gotta show up with Reinar and intimidate and kill them on turn one. Like it's like that's just what it is. And KO you know. swing for twenty six and yeah, after taking their hand, yeah, that's like it's what you gotta do. Um, no, but I will I, say uh, um, that like I, I am interested because like you mentioned that it's not like which hero won worlds. It's more about mm -hmm. which player. But that does bring me to say, like, I, I know that whoever wins Worlds with a certain hero, that hero is getting the uh, Living Legend points. I think maybe the the Blitz hero that they played should also get a little bit of the Living Legend points as well. But I know it doesn't work like that. And it's something yeah. that I would like to be explored if you're going to do split format. But uh, go ahead, what were you going to say? No, I was just, just going to basically feed off what you were saying in that I think them them making this decision to make it about the player and not the deck because i think that's what they're doing by mm -hmm. making it so format variant that it it is about who is the best player not who pilots the best deck the best right and i think those are pretty pretty t that's a clear distinction and like i i love this i absolutely love the fact mm -hmm. that there can start to be because i think that's the one thing that's it's it started to take shape, all right. It's a little amalgamous still, but like there's there's a pro scene, so to speak. Like you know, like ever since Tyler won on Prism in Vegas, like you've got you've got like these names that sort of rise up, and they're there. But I would love I would love to see that become a lot more solidified, and I would like them. I would like to see conversations around top sixteens more than just like mm -hmm. yeah. the top player like the person who won because i feel like for the first year of like this competitive their current format of how they're running their op i think that it's been like who won it's like yeah. okay no i want i really want conversation around the top 16 you know and i want to start like looking at who and maybe that's just me because i haven't done like a lot of like in like digging myself i i have but i haven't been fed a lot of information about all of these people in top 16, I've had to find that myself, right? So yeah. I, I would love the conversation to expand. Like, top 16, who's winning? Who's consistently in that top 16? Top 32 even, you know? Like, whatever it's got to be, just to start to really see, like, who's making that? You know, like, Michael Hamilton, where did he finish? Like, I want to know where Michael Hamilton finished. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just stuff like that, I think, is going to be really fun with the way that they're setting up their competitive scene. So... Yeah, I'm I'm I am on board with it. After, yeah, and, after coming to terms with the, the yeah. ad, <laughs> changing my mindset cuz contrary to popular belief these days, you can change what you think about something. You don't need to be that like dig your heels in <laughs> asshole on every social media post. You no, I don't I don't think. believe you, Dane. Damn it. No. Yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> Um 
I, I will say, you know, I, I, I imagine we're going to see a lot more players kind of like listing their accolades as like, oh, calling top eight, uh, calling yeah. top 16, Pro Tour top eight. You know, I remember, you know, Magic, you know, you, you know people would be like, oh, you know, so-and-so had 10 GP top eights, which like, you know, it, yeah. that's going to be something that we look at. Um, and, uh, another mm-hmm. thing, you know, I don't know if you saw this, but I was part of a pro tour, um, France fantasy fantasy draft, which was yeah, cool. Yeah. And it's like kind of cool. I... Like, you know, and, and obviously, you know, I don't, I don't know if it puts unnecessary pressure on the players, uh, cause we're all tagging them. And, and like, I was yeah. like reaching out to people. I'm like, are you, are you playing? You know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> um, but no, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, now some other predictions we have. Uh, Darth Prentice, uh, Greg in the in the Discord, who's awesome, uh, says no room blades in top eight. I'm gonna say that's uh, that's that's a little too bold. Yeah, I don't think that that's necessarily the case. I know there's been a ton of conversation around viscerai, but I like he's very strong and he's very good at what he does. Mm-hmm. And I feel I actually feel like the consistency of him, like and consistency in the sense of like what what he brings to every game, like no matter what. Like there's like without high rolling what he brings, right? Yeah. Is going to push him into top tables, depending on like I guess volume of play. But like they released the the breakdown of heroes represented, right, at the uh what the shit? Singapore? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So they released that breakdown. So, like, and looking at that hero breakdown is really interesting, actually. But, like, I think that having him represented in volume like that is going to result in him just being there naturally, at least top 16, 32. But mm-hmm. I would be shocked if he wasn't present at all in top eight. If there wasn't one viscerai, I'd be like, I would be a little bit taken aback, I think. Yeah. And then, I mean, obviously, Briar is still a thing i mean we saw four of them in the top eight in singapore so yeah greg i don't know about no room blade in top eight i would i you know i would be i would be not i would not be super surprised if we saw a lot of other stuff and maybe one room blade but i think at Mm -hmm. least one is sneaking in there um what do you think do you think viscerai or if there's one room blade in top eight you think it's briar or viscerai i'm gonna say viscerai um Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of, especially like the, um, the, the Australian and and New Zealand players are kind of like these OG Room Blade players coming coming mm-hmm. into this tournament, and if they feel comfortable in Viserai, like I, I'm not sure on what a lot of people are playing, but I could see like you know, even Hayden Dale kind of you know getting in there with Viserai and mm-hmm. and and spiking the tournament. So. Um, I think Briar is a little bit more of a glass cannon than Viscerai. Viscerai yes. is very consistent. Yeah. Um, next, that. we have Jim from Fab TCG Cards who says Azalea in the top eight. Hashtag Azalea Cult. Um, sorry, Jim. <laughs> that one's. <laughs> I mean, I I hope no, for the sake no of the fucking game. Way. There's, <laughs> if there if that happens, I immediately am like, what is the quality of this? Like, is this even a are, are they scrubbing the living legend points being given out at this, at this calling? Because <laughs> how? What happened? No, I uh, we've got that Azalea bounty thing going on, and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just I would I would love to see it. Like if there was a pilot that's just a fucking mad lad that was just running train with Azalea, like some <laughs> crazy build, or just running these lines that no one had seen before and just catching people off guard. I would be all for that. For I, sure. Unfortunately, I think it's literally not possible. So I, I don't, I don't know. Okay, I, I would will love say. to be proven. Wrong. I would love to, if I was wrong and proven wrong by this. I would be the happiest incorrect person on the planet. I mean, I would love to see it. I will say if if someone like uh, Michael Fang picked up yeah. Azalea, right, and six O yeah. draft. Because Michael Fings is an yeah. excellent lim- limited player, yeah. uh, then he'd probably have to go what six and four CC, 
maybe to make top eight. I'm not. It's, it's yeah, sixteen I rounds. Mean, if he six, if he six zero draft, and then went, like, he'd have to. He'd still have to have a winning yeah. record in CC. Yes, but yeah. So yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. I don't so, know if you six zero. If you six zero draft and then go five five, you're probably you have a shot still, right? Depending on when the losses came. Yeah, I guess. I guess maybe. I don't know. I, I, I feel like yeah, last regardless. pro tour. I mean, obviously there wasn't a draft, but like last pro tour, I think it was like X fours got in. Maybe. Like maybe. Yeah. Maybe X three. That is. That actually does. Yeah, that's um, right. But so I'm yeah. talking. I'm talking on my ass. Anyways, that would. So yeah, literally. The Azalea player would have to, I think, would have to be 6-0 in draft to even have a remote chance of, of getting yeah. into the top eight. But other than that, uh, no shot, Jim. I'm very sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, next we have uh, Super Legend says that Prism will not achieve Living Legend this weekend. And she won't even make top eight in either of the tournaments. This is a fear, actually. That, thank you for just, like shoving this in my face <laughs> who what was what was the name of the guy super legend this? sean he's super a great legend. guy okay sean well thank you for just making me live in this fear more because i appreciate that <laughs> but like that's the thing is like i don't think that she will either which means that do i just keep playing and practicing and like playing prism because i just i'm continually like oh she's not and then she's going to and i'll be like oh shit like <laughs> <laughs> I would really love if she just would shit or get off the pot, you know? So yeah. I want her to, I, at this point with the, that added to my plate of like, do I, don't I, I would rather have her just living legend this weekend and be done. But I, I don't know with the current dude. I don't know. I also when like when it was the chain meta, I thought prism had no shot in Vegas. And then Tyler goes and just fucking wins it all. So, yeah. so I, I, I legit don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, I don't know either. Uh, it, it, I think it, you know. That's uh, a tough one. That's really tough depends one, I, you know. on how many people felt confident enough sleeving up Guardian this weekend. I, I really think it, it comes down to that. Yeah. Because, um, you know, there will be Guardians there. And I think a lot of people are pretty confident and high on both Oldham and Bravo. And yeah. rightfully so, because it's like crazy go wide meta, you mm -hmm. know, you can kind of mm -hmm. like slow them down. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, God, I mean, if, if that happens, I, I think, I think she at least makes a top eight of either the calling or the pro tour, um, is, is my yeah, guess. That's safe. Um, it would, and then it would really have to come down to what the matchups were like in top eight. Um, that's what. That's exactly what I'm struggling with when I'm trying to like, when I'm asking myself if she's going to make it, it's like, there's so many factors that are outside of her control of whether or not she gets in, right? Like mm -hmm. what else is brought in, what volume it's brought, what are her matchups like? like? It's just, there's so many unknowns that it's like, I, at this point, fucking maybe, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, you know? And then there's also, it's, it's feasible that, I mean, it's worth mentioning that these will be the best prism players in the world playing prism and prism yeah. if like if you play it correctly into the bad matchups you can still win so like um yep. yeah no uh, interesting to see but uh, we're going to move on to our predictions i'm going to go through through mine uh really quick and then i'm going to give you the floor dane if you don't mind um yeah. i jotted down some just quick stuff you know, based on what we saw in Singapore and, and, and kind of what we've been seeing in the past month or so, I, I do think the field is going to be a lot of Fi. Um, I think a lot of Briar. You know, we're, it's going to be the – it's it's so weird. Like, Pro Tour New Jersey felt like it was the, the Pro Tour of Aggro, but it yep. was more like just the Pro Tour of Starvo and people trying to beat it. And um, I think this is a going to be a very diverse aggro meta. I think a lot of Fi and Briar, um, you know, these are these are decks that are proven. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot of people are comfortable with them, uh, especially the players that are coming in who, who didn't really know what to play. Right. 
um, like Phi, not to say Phi's a uh, difficult, like uh, not uh, like an easy deck to play, but it is um, pretty straightforward. You know, it's easy to get the reps in on Phi, um, especially when you're already testing for limited. Uh, Briar we've had for a while. I think a lot of people are comfortable with Briar. Uh, not much has changed in the world of Briar since the Errata and the the bands. And, you know, obviously there were four Briars at, at the top eight of, of Singapore. And, you know, I could see that um, kind of giving people a lot of faith in the deck. Um, however, mm-hmm. we did see Dash win, right? So we saw Dash win. Uh, I do not know if that will sway people into Dash. Um, if you look, like, in the I mean... f- Flesh and Blood buying um a discord like channel yep yep it's a lot of tech low foundry arts to be picked up at leal <laughs> now i yeah, yeah. <laughs> i do not know um uh, if that's people do just want to get buy it now uh maybe play in the calling um dash is obviously scary did you did you watch that top eight i watched like i didn't watch the the final match mm-hmm. but i watched like um, I was in and out like the whole time. I would say I didn't watch more than ten minutes total. So mm-hmm. don't no. I'm just gonna say no. <laughs> I'm gonna go back, and I don't know why I tried to like to cover that. <laughs> that's up, all right. That's all right. I did not. I mean, so it was it was a that. way different time zone, and I, I only watched the top <laughs> eight like VOD. So like, um, yeah. I mean that it's 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 the Teclo Pounder Dash, right? Um, very yeah. straightforward. Obviously, everybody's talking about Talishar, Talishar or whatever, right? It did get in like a free. 12 points of damage like basically right. um mm-hmm. but you know it it's dash it's a boost it's like um a lot of players have been on dash for a very long time they know the deck well teclo pounders like such a surprisingly potent card uh in the deck mm-hmm. and I, I i i i think there will be players that like run rampant with this deck and they just have to hope to not run into things that want to block it. And uh, that's yeah. basically it. It will feast on the Fies and Briars and Viscerize of the world, but it will, uh, you know, falter against the guardians. Yeah. I, well, I mean, does it feast on Fi? Does, uh, like, does it? I don't know. I haven't, I believe I haven't it does. Game plan. Yeah, because and and much much the reason that I also feel like and maybe I'm a little biased that Levi feasts on Phi quite a bit because mm-hmm. because Phi really does not want to block at all and right and the amount of damage that you can output and still block in in dash I feel like you can mm-hmm. you can uh, really put them to the test and and um, okay and also I wasn't sure if the on hit effects of Phi were more potent than the non on hit effects of dash but i mean that makes sense i'm totally i'd buy that for a dollar yeah and um, then also like i mean we saw in the finals which I, I know you didn't watch but we saw an opening turn dash go uh mm-hmm. t-bone 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 which um yeah. is you know it's it's something that can happen in that deck quite a bit so you know it's it's, it's something that is That's worth fair. talking yeah. about <laughs> um but yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of dash and viscerai, as we said. Uh, but I, I did, with all that being said, I think a, a Bravo and an Oldham can kind of come in here, or even Alexi and like um, mm-hmm. Icelander could kind of like you know, feast on these these decks a little bit as well. Um, I think yeah, I think a good like I saw that you had mentioned Yuki mm-hmm. and like I I love I think Ice Alexi's got a really interesting play into this field oh yeah right specifically just because of the the resource curve of a lot of these decks that are doing well so far granted viscerai sort of falls outside of that a little bit with like his his cost reduction but as far as like fies and dashes you know apparently and (laughs) (laughs) you know i feel like there's a lot of these decks that are going to play different getting taxed that if they don't have reps in on that are going to struggle so i'd be i'd be curious to see but then again you uh, like that ice lexi build that i think is going to be good it's it's basically 
you know, it's almost like a wizard build. Like it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. you've got to have like your lines and stuff down into matchups. And I feel like that pilot skill is going to take a lot to get there to make Lexi work. It takes a lot. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that she's going to think that, that Lexi is going to be in the top eight for sure. I'm not saying that because I don't know. I don't know what that, what the volume of ice Lexis that are that high, highly skilled are going to be. But I think that it's definitely worth the conversation. So. Yeah, I think it 100% is. I mean, uh, so, yeah, I, I kind of listed, like I said, that I think Icelander, you know, I think these, these drafters, um, for the for the draft, we can see a lot of Icelander resurgence, like, you know, these really skilled drafters kind of taking advantage of a lot of players who did not focus on limited leading up to it, uh, kind of forcing Phi. And then we see these uh, really skilled um, limited players kind of take advantage of that and, and get into Icelander pretty easily. Um, my top eight, I, I could see a Vis, I could see a Dash, some Bravo, some Briar, some Phi. I did want to mention some players. Now, I, as you said, Yuki. So I picked Yuki first round in in the the player draft, uh, yeah. based on pilot skill. Uh, she's she's incredible. And if if this is set up for, um, uh, for the um, uh, the kind of like meta where Yuki can kind of really slay. Uh, I think it, I think it'll be good. Yeah, yeah. And I, I picked Cody Williams, who was a great chain player, and then Gregor's and Ethan, mm-hmm. obviously because he plays Leviah. Um, and I, I, I kind of put Matt Rogers. He's still super consistent. And well, like, I mean, Matt Rogers is gonna have to be on dash now because yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's sort of just how that goes, right? So no, it's, that was my one comment I want to make about like the whole dash resurgence. Is I I mean. Matt has just been around since like the induction of this game and being a really early content creator, you know, he was one of the few like faces to the game that we had. And I mean, control dash was like his jam. That's like what he put his name on. And like Mm -hmm. the memes have just been (laughs) relentless and it's been, it's been really entertaining. I'm sorry for any pain it's actually caused him, if any. He's, you know, I'm sure he's been fine. I'm sure yeah, he's probably right. a good sport. But I mean, yeah, he's got to yeah. have a lot of confidence at this point, you know. <laughs> yes, but dude, like I, that, because that that hits me. That hits me right. Like if I invest in something and then I'm like, oh, all right, time to move on, and then I look back and see that that thing did really well. That would destroy me as like <laughs> who i am in my psyche so i can't even i get it i get it man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um th- now you know that's that's kind of where i'm at i think maybe we'll see so we had a european winner in jersey maybe we'll see a u.s yep. winner uh or a north american winner in in france which would be nice um what, yeah. what are some of your um you know before we wrap up here what are some of your predictions so i i'll be honest i I've got like emotional predictions, but I don't follow. I mean, I don't follow a ton of people to know even necessarily who's going. Like I was watching your draft. I will say I learned the majority of who was actually going to be there from like watching you guys <laughs> do your draft thing. Like you're just like watching it progress. Cause I was like, dude, I don't, I don't follow people like that a whole lot. Like I would, I mean, I've, I've been a fan of Yuki. I've been a fan. Like, I'm, just listing names now but like tyler tyler horse mm-hmm. especially yeah. being on winning in prison in vegas like and like and then once he like because he took briar to um florida and like did amazing with briar too so it's like okay cool it wasn't like a one trick pony a one trick pony puddle um <laughs> but like he like it it was like there's some names that like i've kind of clung to a little bit because i think that they're really entertaining and uh and they're just like really good players but yeah man as far as like personal predictions that's one of the things that i'm excited for worlds bringing to my table personally is letting us start to like establish at least for me like establish who are the you know top 50 players in the world i want to have like that knowledge on that and have that be like what the community seeks to so then, then conversations can be had around it. Because like right now, I've got like five people that I know that I'm like, dude, Michael Hamilton's there. 
Cool. Michael Hamilton's my boy. <laughs> Tyler's there. Cool. Tyler's my boy. Like Yuki, she's gonna be there. Great. Yuki's my girl, man. Like let's 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 throw these names out there. But I have no fucking clue. So sorry to like burn that bridge a little bit. No, but, it's, it's that's all good. I, I don't know, man. Well, call call your shot with a hero. Who do you think? Which hero you think's winning? Is it Dash? It's gonna be Matt Rogers on Dash, and he's <laughs> going to. He's going to reclaim that. He's just going to be like, take the crown back. Possible, but I didn't know. <laughs> um, okay. If I really, if I really had to guess, oh, it's hard to get like that Singapore, like calling and those results out of my head a little bit because something that you, you know, if you've been in card games for a while, you realize the drastic difference in metas around the world, mm-hmm. right? Like they, how, how different they can be. Um, so if I if I had to really really put money down, I really think that shit, dude. <laughs> it's hard. Just say prism, you know. I, I know I it's what you want to say. I want I want to say I think prism <laughs> wins just because she's won one I haven't expected her to win before. That's it. Tyler you know? did this to me because I literally had, I went into the Vegas calling thinking like, oh well, Chain's gonna win this one. Because Chain's the clear front runner, and it's like nah, 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 nah. Prism. Hey, so I'm, just, I'm I'm gonna say Prism just to stay consistent with my thoughts and feelings, and we'll go with that. I <laughs> think uh, honestly, it wouldn't even surprise me. You know, it's at this point, Prism, right? That's pr- the thing. Prism That's what just I go does back it. To. Yeah. That's what I go back to is like who if I heard one, who would I be like? Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. Prism. Prism. Like, it makes sense. Prism, man. But uh, then she LLs. That's so many birds with one stone. That's yeah. like seven birds with one stone. It's like she's she living legends. She like I don't have to fucking. I can just move on. Just let me move on. I don't want to have like this drunk calling you at night, like telling you I miss you bullshit for seven <laughs> months. I want to just move on. So that would be quite the story. Two pro tours rotating two different heroes. Obviously, uh, the calling yeah. had rotated Starvo, but. You know, it, it is. Uh, it's. Uh, I'm. I'm excited to see uh, what what happens here. But um, I want to thank you for coming on, Dane. This is a lot of fun. Um, uh, yeah, I can't man. wait to hang out again at an event and to get the rest of the crew on. Um, I want you to please plug anything that you want to plug, and then I'll plug what I'm going to plug, and then so I want to ask you about a juicy Lucy. <laughs> yeah, dude. So super simple. Outcast Haven. Uh, on YouTube, so it's out youtube.com slash outcast saving no apostrophe, no space. Um, that's our YouTube channel. That's where Jason and Blake and I have a weekly podcast. Sometimes it's live. This 100th episode this week will be a live Ooh. episode on Saturday. So we're planning on going live during during Lily, Lil, right? One so one of them. I'm just going to go Lily because I'm an ignorant American. We'll lean into that. <laughs> but um, we're actually going to be going live during that. So not going to be too butthurt if you guys decide to watch the coverage. You know, that'll be fine. But um, that's going to be our 100th episode. Really pumped to just, like, talk about the the tournament as it's going on and give our, our predictions and stuff there, too, and celebrate two years of this which has been, you know, a blast and really appreciate all the support from everybody. If you haven't checked us out, feel free to. You can also find us on Twitter. We've got our little ta- tags above our names on our podcast. Uh, but I am now going to look up mine, outcast underscore Dane. Ooh. So that's <laughs> D-A-N-E, outcast underscore Dane on Twitter. And we all have our own Twitter feed. So if you want to follow us there and kind of catch what we're talking about, then that would be appreciated as well but that's all we got nothing really crazy going on other than that yeah well i do implore everybody to check check it out uh they're they're all great great folks over there i I had a blast over there you can go check out the episode i was on which was fun um as well as all their other episodes all two years of it um congratulations my friend that's awesome um uh, everybody can find me still on twitter at fresh buds pod you can uh, check out the YouTube, uh, Fresh and Buds, if you're already watching this here or listening to this here. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. It helps. Uh, look out for some cool stuff on YouTube coming. Uh, I'm very excited to announce it in September, I think. 
Um, check out the Buds Discord. Uh, the Buds Discord is a lot of fun. It's free to join. You guys can just hop in and hang out. Uh, we, we do all kinds of stuff. We have a great community there. And uh, if you're listening to this on like Spotify or iTunes or anything like that, uh, rate it, leave a review. It, all that helps. Um, it's wonderful. And I always like to end the episode talking about food. You're from Minnesota. What's the deal with the Juicy Lucy? I mean, Minnesota is the home of the Juicy Lucy. So you got to – I mean, have you ever have you ever had one? Not – no, no. I mean, like no? I've done done it at home, like, right, just through the cheese and, right. in, in the meat and, and cooked a burger, but never a true Juicy Lucy. I mean, there's a, so there's a couple restaurants that compete for, like, the or- origin of the Juicy Lucy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, my so there's a little bar called matt's um and i'm almost positive is what it's called but now i'm questioning it because again <laughs> i didn't I actually do any research on the show notes but um yeah, it's this little like corner bar and it's just it's just good it's cheese it, it's like biting into a burger you know when you bite into a burger and it's great because like you get like that like the juices and everything mm-hmm. exploding in your mouth. It's like now you just, instead of just the meat juices, you get cheese as well also <laughs> exploding. So I'll say, I mean, it's just, it's a win-win. Because you can't even, you know. Sounds amazing. And if you've made it at home, if you made it at home, you've probably got the experience for the most part. If we're being totally honest, I don't oh. want to subscribe to like this whole like, it's, you got to be here. Travel to Minnesota and try it. It's like, no, put some cheese inside of some meat, smash it down into a patty, and eat that shit because it's good. You're freezing my ass off. Yeah, I can't wait for this thing. I'll go to Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. Well, uh, that's a great way to wrap it up, uh, much like the cheese inside the meat. Um, but everybody, please check out the Outcast Haven and also have a great week and enjoy the Pro Tour.